Good morning, uh, or good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you are watching this video. Um, I am uploading this video as uh, additional or supplementary material to our module in uh, facilitating child-centered learning entitled self-concept and self-efficacy. So for this particular module, our objectives are the following. Differentiate self-concept, self-esteem, and self-efficacy from each other. Explain how self-concept and self-efficacy influence or affect academic performance. Discuss how self-concept and self-efficacy can be promoted in the classroom. So let's start. As already mentioned, our uh, discussion this, up the, this time will focus on self-concept and self-efficacy. Let's start with self-concept. Self-concept is um, generally defined or understood as the totality of complex, organized, and dynamic system of learned beliefs, attitudes, and opinions that each person holds to be true about his or her personal existence. That definition may sound too complex for some of you, so let's simplify it. Um, these are views, these are attitudes, these are beliefs that we have, self-concept, no? our opinions, attitudes, beliefs that we have about ourselves. These beliefs, attitudes, and opinions, because they are many, are usually organized so that we have a clear concept, a clear idea of who we are, who, of who we are as persons. Our self-concept is simply our view, our idea, our opinion of who we are as persons. What we think of ourselves as persons, how we feel about the different aspects of our personality, what we think of ourselves as persons or as human beings is our self-concept. Self-concept, concept means idea or views. So our self-concept, self-concept is our, our idea, our view, our opinion of who we are as persons. It can also refer to what we think of ourselves as persons or as human beings. It is related to uh, the term self-image. What do we think of ourselves as persons? What is our image of ourselves as persons? How we do we think of ourselves as human beings? How do we uh, picture ourselves in our mind? Yeah. Kung ano ang tingin natin sa ating mga sarili bilang tao. Kung ano ang opinion, kung ano ang tingin natin sa mga iba't ibang aspeto ng ating pagkatao. That is our self-concept. So, uh, we may define it further as the set. So, pag sinabing set, may, may ni, uh, several uh, members or elements. So this self-concept is a set of perceptions. How do we perceive ourselves? No? Ideas and thoughts that an individual has about himself. They should be himself, not themselves. 
The answer to the question, who am I, is our self-concept. Of course, this does not only refer to our name, our knowledge of where we were born, when we were born, who our parents are. But uh, they are included. Uh, Self-concept goes further than that. Uh, Self-concept also uh, includes our um, perception, our ideas, our thoughts, our feelings, our opinions regarding our other characters such as our attitudes, our physical bodies, our academic uh, capabilities, how we socialize with others as you will see shortly in the slides that will follow. Um, the concept or the term uh, self-concept is often likened, compared, and used interchangeably with the term self-esteem. Although they are very closely related, they are two different terms or constructs. Self-concept is um, our picture, our image, our view, our opinion of ourselves. What we think of ourselves as persons. Self-esteem, on the other hand, refers to the subjective evaluation that we make about our own personal characteristics. There is a subjective evaluation. If we think highly of ourselves, if we have high level of self-respect, then we say that we have high self-esteem. So yung self-concept, picture lang natin, idea lang natin, opinion lang natin, kung ano tayo as persons, as human beings, there is no element of evaluation, assessment of ourselves as persons, assessment of our worth as human beings. Wala bang pag-judge sa sarili? Kasi yung pag-judge sa sarili, pag-evaluate, is already uh, covered by the term self-esteem. So, as I uh, mentioned just a while ago, self-concept is very closely related to self-esteem. Because if we have a positive self-concept, then generally we also have high self-esteem. If we have a, posi a positive or desirable opinion or view of ourselves, then it would generally follow that we would think highly of ourselves, that we would have high self-respect. Yeah. So sila ay very closely related, but different. Uh, magkaugnay, pero hindi sila magkapareho. So let us proceed. Let us go back to our uh, topic, self-concept. Again, this is our image, our opinion, our view, view, our thoughts regarding ourselves as persons. Okay. Our personality has uh, different components. Now, as a person, we have uh, physical characteristics. We have uh, mental or psychological characteristics, we have social characteristics, we have transpersonal or spiritual characteristics. So these are the different aspects of our personality. So our self-concept, the components of our self-concept uh, correspond to these um, aspects of our personality. So we have what we call physical self-concept, 
academic self-concept, social self-concept, and transpersonal self-concept. Okay, so going back, the different components of self-concept are as follows, no? Um, physical, academic, social, and transpersonal. Let's talk about the first one, the physical self-concept. This relates to that which is concrete, meaning what we look like, our sex, or gender, no? Kung lalaki, kung babae, or somewhere in between. Yung ating height, our weight, etc. What clothes we wear, what kind of car we drive, what kind of home we live in, and so forth. These are uh, the different um, aspects or elements that compose our physical self-concept. What do we think about our physical appearance? Tingin ba natin sa sarili? Pangit tayo? Then that is our self-concept. Physical self-concept. Tingin natin sa ating sarili? Uh, pogi tayo? Then that is our physical self-concept. That is our concept. That is our, that is our idea. That is our picture of, of ourselves. Pogi tayo? So that is... Mm, our physical self-concept. Yung ibang babae, they consider themselves to be very beautiful, very pretty. That is their self-concept. That is how they see themselves physically. Yung sex or gender. There are uh, girls who see themselves as very feminine. No? Babae and babae. Meron namang mga lalaki who perceive or see themselves as very masculine. There are some others who view themselves as, uh, as uh, effeminate. There are others who view themselves as uh, homosexuals. They are males, but in their hearts, they consider themselves as females. So they behave as such. Yun ang kanilang self-concept. That is how they view themselves. Wait. Kaya nga mayroong mga tao nagsasabi, Naku, ang taba-taba ako na. Ang taba-taba ako na. Dabiyanan ako. Balienan ako. That is how they perceive. That, that is how they see themselves as persons with regards to weight. That is their physical self-concept. So you see, so we have different concepts of our physical selves. We see or view ourselves physically differently. And that is very easily understood. Why? Because we differ in physical appearance. And so therefore, comparing ourselves with others, we will have different self-concepts. We will have different physical self-concepts. Halimbawa ako, comparing myself to others, I can see that I am taller than many. So I will, con uh, I will perceive myself, I will think of myself as a rather tall person. Yun ang tingin ko sa sarili ko, medyo matangkad ako ah. Kasi nakikita ko sa paligid ko, mas matangkad ako sa maraming tao. So you see, yung iba naman, ah, they are shorter than most people they see around them. So they will have that self-concept. Um, medyo kinuulang ako sa hike, pero hindi bali. Uh, bumawi naman ako sa kagwapuan. <laughs> see? Physical self-concept, our picture of our physical selves, our image of our physical bodies, our physical characteristic. So that's one aspect, no? Physical self-concept. We also have academic self-concept. Hmm. Kung yung physical self-concept is how we see ourselves physically, dito naman sa academic, academic self-concept, as the term implies, this is our idea, this is our opinion, this 
is our view of ourselves in terms of academic capabilities. This refers to our idea of how we learn, how intelligent we are, and how well, how excellent we are in school. There are two levels, as you can see in the slide. First is the general academic self-concept, which refers to how good we see ourselves to be overall. Diba mayroong ganyan na ang tingin sa sarili ay magaling siya sa school overall. Meaning, uh, uh, he or she believes that he has that intelligence, that academic capability to do well in school uh, generally. Meaning, sa lahat ng subject, sa lahat ng ginagawa sa school, tingin niya sa sarili niya, magaling siya. Or the opposite. Tingin niya sa sarili niya, generally speaking, lahat ng subjects, all school activities, uh, she is not good. Yan. Weathering a specific subjects. We call that a specific content-related self-concept. Kaya mayroong nagsasabi, magaling ako sa mathematics, brad. Kaya lang, I'm not very good in English. So you see, content-related self-concept. His uh, idea of himself is good academically, but only for a specific subject. Only for a specific area. Yan. Iba yun doon sa general academic self-concept where a person thinks of himself as good or excellent in school generally. Yan. Sa lahat ng activity, sa lahat ng subjects, tingin niya, oh, magaling siya. He may not excel in all subjects, but generally, he is good. Ayun ang kanyang academic self-concept. Meaning, he thinks of himself that way as far as academics is concerned. Yun ang kanyang academic self-concept. Let us proceed. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. General academic self-concept. Our view, our uh, opinion, our idea of how we do in school generally. Then, meron ding a specific content-related self-concepts, meaning content-related uh, sa mathematics lang, sa language lang, sa science lang. Tingin niya magaling siya sa science but not in language. So you see, that's specific to, to a particular content on or area. Very common sa mga bata yan, kahit sa atin, mga estudyante, uh, 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 those of us who are in the academy, whether you are uh, teaching or, or whether you are a student. Oh, magaling. Brad, magaling talaga ako sa English. Highest na naman ako. Kaya lang, pagdating sa mat, nako, malapit na ako sa lowest. Ganyan yan. A specific content-related self-concepts. Let us proceed. So, we also have what we call social self-concept. This describes how we relate to other people. How do we see ourselves as social uh, beings? Do we consider ourselves sociable? Kung ang tingin natin sa ating sarili ay sociable, at tingin natin sa ating sarili ay palakaibigan tayo, if we see ourselves as somebody who can easily get the trust of people, that is how we see ourselves uh, in the social area. Yun ang tingin natin at sa ating sarili uh, socially. Uh, yun ang tingin natin sa ating ability to establish relationships with people. Uh, uh, ability to socialize. Ability to fraternize or mingle with other people. Yan. That is our social self-concept. Okay, ako, how do we see as 
uh, how do we see myself as a person in terms of, say, uh, sociability? Ako ba ay mahilig makihalubilo sa tao? Kapag ang sagot ay hindi, I prefer to be alone most of the time. That is my self-concept. Meaning, I view myself, I see myself, I consider myself an introvert. Pag ang tingin ko naman sa aking sarili ko, I'm a very uh, friendly person. I love the company of people. I love to be with people. I love to meet new people. I can easily uh, be friend with them. Uh, with them. <laughs> I can easily get or earn their trust. So that's, that's me. I'm a friendly guy. So you see, that's my self-concept. My social self-concept. Bakit tinawag na social self-concept? Because it refers, it pertains to my social ability. How well I socialize with other people. And then we also have the transpersonal self-concept which describes how we relate to the supernatural unknown. How do we relate to things that are beyond the, the here and now? Things that are beyond the concrete. How do we relate to things that are not perceived or that cannot be perceived by our senses? Say for example, our spirituality, our relationship with God, our relationship with, with the church we go to, kung saan simbahan tayo nag ng, 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 ng service or mass or whatever it is that you do in your church. How do we see ourselves? Halimbawa, kapag ang isang tao, ang tingin niya sa kanyang sarili ay say, very religious, yun ang kanyang transpersonal self-concept. He views himself as somebody who has a, a, a um, strong, a stable uh, relationship with, with, uh, with God. Yeah. Or other, super, other supernatural uh, entities. Yung tinatawag natin mga supernatural entities, yun yung mga entities beyond the normal, beyond the natural. No? Kaya nga supernatural. Yung mga lampas ba sa level ng mga natural natin, nakikita ang mga pangyayarit nila lang. Supernatural. So, how do we view ourselves as person in terms of uh, supernatural unknown instead of uh, instead in terms of the supernatural and how we uh, relate to them how do we incorporate them into our lives that's our transpersonal self-concept kapag ang tingin ng isang tao sa kanyang sarili ay hindi siya masyadong religyoso and he's okay with that no? hindi, ako, hindi ako pala simba hindi ako sumasali sa mga prayer meetings or whatever but I consider myself a spiritual person oh, ngayon ang kanyang tingin sa kanyang sarili that is his transpersonal self-concept okay alright so let us try to answer this why is this important in the field of education why are we studying this what are we going to benefit from this as teachers? What good will this do to us and to our students? Um, what good will this do to teaching and learning? Why are we uh, spending time talking about this? Well, the answer is that um, <clears throat> Self-concept is based on the relationship that the subject, meaning the person. The subject here is the person. Kung pinag-usapan na ako, di ako yung subject. Kung, kung ikaw ang pinag-usapan, di ikaw yung subject. If we are talking about another person, then yung, siyang subject. If we are talking about people in general, then that's the, they are the subject. The subject, meaning the person, <clears throat> has a relationship with society and their environment. <clears throat> Individuals or human beings are 
um, social beings. Meaning, we do not exist in isolation. We, we exist in a group. We exist in a society. And so, therefore, we exist within a milieu. We exist within an environment. The society and the environment under which we live or within which we live influence us, how we view ourselves. How we view ourselves influences or affects our behavior as persons. And our behavior as persons will determine our actions. It will determine the language we will use, the, 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 how we conduct ourselves as human beings. It will also influence or affect uh, other areas of our lives, including the academic areas, lalo na sa mga bata. So mayroon po itong kaugnayan sa edukasyon. The way we see ourselves, the way we think of ourselves, influences how we behave. Here, the way we see ourselves, meaning our self-concept, our self-concept significantly influences. So, hindi lang influences, kundi significantly influences. Meaning, our self-concept affects to a great extent how we act, how we behave in different spheres, in different areas of our life, including schooling. So this is related to schooling, this is related to academic performance, this is related to academic um, proficiency, or overall performance in school. Kaya natin pinag-aaralan. Konektado po siya sa uh, education. Okay? So, sabi nga dito, there are many elements, there, there are many factors that affect or influence academic performance. Kasama dyan ang mga teachers and their, and their pedagogical or teaching abilities. Siyempre, kung magaling yung teacher magturo, magaling din ang pagkakatuto ng mga bata, no? The, the educational program, uh, the curriculum, the school itself. And the student's family and environment, uh, social environment, even the cultural environment or the cultural background of the learners. These are uh, important elements or factors that influence or affect learning. However, in addition to those already mentioned and discussed, there is one factor that has the most influence on a person's learning ability. Mayroong isang factor, may isang element na siya ang may pinakamalakas, ang may pinakamatinding epekto or influence sa pagkakatuto ng isang tao, lalo ng mga bata natin, mga sadyante natin. What is that factor? Yan o, nakarad, self-concept. Kaya ito napunta sa ating mga lessons, sa ating modules. This is a very important construct, terminology, idea, or concept to understand, especially among us teachers who will deal with very young individuals, very young learners later on. When you become teachers, you will deal with these very young people, very young learners, and your relationship or your relationship uh, with them the learning experiences uh, you give uh, to them will significantly or greatly affect their behavior, which in turn will affect their academic performance. Yan o, tingnan natin. The relationship between self-concept and um, academic performance. Let us see. Here we will discuss what we have been mentioning in passing uh, since the beginning of this video. 
So tingnan natin. How is self-concept related to academic performance? Para maging relevant talaga yung ating discussion to our work as teachers later. Baka magtanong kayo, ba tayo napunta dito sa mga self-concept na ito? Yeah. So let us see. When people, remember, we're talking about the relationship between self-concept and academic performance. Ha? Ano pang kaugnayan sa dalawang yan? Self-concept and academic performance. What's the kaugnayan? What's the relationship between them? First, when people who are close and significant to you evaluate you in some way, it affects how you see yourself. Diba sabi natin kanina, the way people see us and the way they uh, evaluate us, how they behave towards us based on their evaluation or judgment of ourselves as persons affect how we see ourselves. Meaning the way uh, people's behavior and attitude towards us influence how our self-concepts will take shape. That's another way of saying that. Kung ano yung behavior at attitude sa atin ng tao na nakikita natin, malakas ang epekto noon sa ating magiging self-concept. Kung positive ang treatment sa atin ng mga tao, we feel that they approve of us. We feel that they um, accept us for who we are, then most probably we will have a positive self-concept. Kasi ang tingin natin sa pagtanggap sa atin ng ibang tao ay maayos. So we, we will tend to have that positive self-concept na ako ay mabuting tao, ako ay mabait, mabuti ang kaibigan. Where did, that, where, where did we base that judgment of, our, of ourselves? Eh kasi mabait sa akin si, si itong friend ko. Uh, I can feel that he loves me as a friend. So siguro mabuti akong tao kasi kung pangit akong tao, kung masama nga kayong gali, uh, lalo yun ako na aking mga friends. They will not love me the way they do. They will not welcome me the way they do. They will, uh, they will not approve of me as a person and accept me as a person the way they do. Siguro mabuti akong tao. So you see, anong kaugnayan nito sa trabaho natin as teachers? Okay, this refers to our behavior towards our students. Because our behavior towards them will affect uh, how they see themselves, then we should manifest or them uh, show behavior to them that will enhance their self-respect. Mm. And that is why we are discouraged to use, uh, say, punishment. We are discouraged, we are, we are uh, hindi nga lang discouraged, eh, kundi talagang bawal na to use uh, derogatory words, embarrassing words, uh, humiliating experiences, demeaning uh, exp uh, expressions, because this will, this will really um, smash the self-esteem, the self-concept of, of the child. Yung bata palagi na lang namumura. So what kind of self-concept will he get? Will he have of himself? Palagi na lang uh, napagtatawanan sa klase because uh, the, the classmates bully him and the teacher tolerates what's happening inside their classroom. Sometimes even the teacher bullies the, 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 student, the learner. So what kind of self-concept will the child have? What kind of image will he have of himself? Ano pa, hindi very negative. Araw-araw na lang napapagalitan ako ni Ma. Siguro talagang bobo ko eh. So you see? Hmm. Yung kanina, napalo na naman ako. Palagi na lang mali sa ko. Siguro talagang bobo ko eh. Siguro nga, bobo nga. So you see? But if we, although hindi naman sasabihin kahit mali-mali yung mga sagot ay poros, very, very good one. Uh, 4 times 3 equals 37. Very good, Juan. Walakpakan. Lalong may insulto yun. Ang ibig kong sabihin, let us deal with the situations inside our classroom in such a way that um, 
embarrassing, humiliating, insulting, uh, learners will be avoided. Marami namang mga paraan to deal with wrong answers. There are many ways of dealing with undesirable behavior. It's part of our training uh, as teachers, no? It's, it's all part of our training as teachers. Hindi natin niya matitake up dito ngayon because we're talking about self-concept. Basta yun yun. Uh, the way we evaluate our pupils, our learners, the way we uh, behave towards them, the kind of attitude we have towards them, the kind of relationship they see we have with them will affect how they would see themselves as learners, as persons. That in turn will help shape his uh, self-concept. So the point here is, as much as possible, we should uh, establish behavior patterns towards our uh, learners in such a way that a positive or desirable self-concept among them will be uh, formed in their minds. Yeah. There are ways of dealing with, uh, say, say, children who cannot get uh, or understand the lesson right away. Mali-mali ang sagot sa tanong, things like those. Marami namang mga paraan to deal with this, no? Without necessarily embarrassing them. Okay, so yun yun. That's the first relationship between uh, self-concept and uh, academic performance. Another one. A student's self Concept determines academic performance. See? Because on a qualitative and quantitative level, your perception of yourself will have repercussions on the effort it will take you to learn something new, do difficult homework, etc. Ganitia, my dear students. The way we see ourselves has a direct effect on how we see ourselves in terms of being able to do schoolwork, even difficult homework. It will have repercussions, it will have consequences, it will have an effect. Yeah. That's the simplest way of, of uh, saying it, no? The way I see myself as a student, halimbawa ako student, the way I see myself as a student will have an effect on the effort I will expend to learn something new, do difficult homework, etc. I'll give you a very simple example. Halimbawa ako, mag-start tayo sa negative. From grade 1 to high school, uh, my teachers have told me that I am, that I am poor. Virgilio, may hina ka talaga. Uh, hindi naman nila si eksaktong sinabing bobo, pero parang yun, ang, parang yun na rin, <laughs> sabi ng mga ba. Hindi ko sinasabing bobo ka, pero <laughs> yun, yun na yun. So, ganun yun. So, from elementary to high school, naramdaman ko na, ang tingin sa akin ng mga teachers ko, they really look at me as uh, academically poor. So pagdating ko ng college, uh, pag may lesson, my, 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 my motivation to engage myself in, in, in mathematics, halimbawa, will be very, very low. Kasi nakasaksak na sa otak ko, bobo ako, mahirap yan, ko yan kaya. So my, my, my um, motivation to try it or to give it a try and to really strive hard, to really work hard, to learn mathematics in college will be, will be very low because uh, it has been ingrained in my mind that I am poor. Nauna sa otak, na, naunang naisaksak na sa otak ko ng aking experiences and environment na ako'y mahina. So, ganun yun. Uh, mababa yung aking motivation level. Mababa yung aking energy na ibibigay doon sa task because it's already there in my mind. I have already formed the uh, idea, I have already formed a judgment of, um, of myself that I am bobo. Yun ang naisaksak sa atin, yun ang, yun ang na-form na self-concept sa akin eh. So I will think of myself as incapable. I will think of myself as academically poor. So when an activity comes up, ah, hindi ko yan kaya, 
Kasi may inakot. So you see? You compare that with a person, with a learner, who has been uh, brought up, who has been exposed to experiences and environment that have enhanced his self-concept or self-image. Anong nangyayari? He becomes confident of himself. He becomes confident of his capabilities. He becomes confident of his abilities. So when something comes up, halimbawa, mahirap na lesson sa mathematics, ah, kaya ko yan. Kasi magaling ako. Hindi naman niya pinagyayabang, ina-announce sa klase na, ay ako magaling. Hindi, yun lang ang palagay niya sa sarili niya. That is how he thinks of himself. And so therefore, he will have that motivation to engage himself in the new task, even if it is difficult. Why? Because he thinks of himself as capable. See? That is how, uh, uh, that is how a negative self-concept adversely affects academic performance. And that is how a positive self-concept enhances or improves academic performance. Next, self-concept and academic performance have a bidirectional and mutually influential relationship. And if either of these components changes, change, the whole system changes until it finds a balance. Bidirectional. By this prefix means correct. Two, dalawa. Bicycle by dalawa angulong. Bicycle. Binoculars. Dalawang yung lens. Dalawang lens. Binary. Also speaking about two. So pag sinabing bidirectional, the effect or influence is mutual. Meaning self-concept academic, ano, self-concept influences or affects academic performance. And in turn, academic performance influences or affects self-concept. If a learner has a very positive, a very self, ano, a very um, desirable, a very good self-concept, the tendency is for him to perform well academically. Diba na demonstrate natin kanina, if you have a positive self-concept, uh, it will tend to result to good or excellent academic performance. So the more positive, the higher, the, 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 the more positive your self-concept becomes, your academic performance uh, also improves. So you see, habang gumaganda, habang gumagaling, uh, yung tingin ng isang bata sa sarili, naka-apekto yun sa kanyang academic performance, uh, patas ng patas yung kanyang grade. So you see, pag negative self-concept, tingin niya sa sarili niya, mahina, ay lalong bababa yung kanyang academic performance. The reverse also applies, meaning academic performance enhances or uh, can, can, can ruin somebody's uh, self-concept depending on the kind of academic performance the child is uh, uh, showing. Habang tumataas lalo ang mga grades, habang lalong gumagaling sa school, ano nangyayari sa self-concept? Di ba lalong gumaganda din? The more it becomes positive, highest na naman ako sa test. Magaling talaga ako. So you see? Kung highest ay kung lowest, lowest na naman ako sa nakumubo talaga ako. So you see? They influence, they affect each other. Negative self-concept will tend to result or lead to poor academic performance. A positive self-concept will tend to result to good or excellent academic performance. Poor academic performance will most likely result to a negative self-concept. 
An excellent academic performance will tend to lead to or result to a positive self-concept. Hence the term bi-directional. They affect, they influence each other. Kumbaga sa nagliligawan eh, ay lab kita, sabi ng pinagsabihan mo. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> diba? Okay, so this one is beautiful. No? Sabi ni Lolo, William Butler Yeats, an American poet. Education is not the feeling of a pale, but the lighting of a fire. Let us light the fire of our children, of our pupils. Meaning, let us awaken their desire, their thirst for knowledge, for learning. No? Let us awaken their curiosity. Let us, uh, let us stimulate, let us titillate their desire to discover and explore. We do not spoon feed information to them. We do not uh, bombard them with information. Okay, so those are the um, Items under the relationship between uh, self-concept and academic performance. Those are the reasons why, actually, no, we teachers or future teachers like you should really understand and appreciate the value of self-concept. Even among teachers, a teacher who has a positive self-concept will teach very well, no? He will think of himself as a very able teacher. And so his performance as a teacher will be influenced or affected by that. So because he views himself as a very able, a very good teacher, he will prepare very good teaching materials or teaching aids. He will prepare uh, exciting and fun learning experiences for his pupils. He will structure his classroom very well things like those, talagang pagbubutihin niya ang kanyang pagtuturo because himself as he, 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 uh, he sees himself as a very able teacher magaling na teacher ang tingin niya sa sarili niya, so therefore in his mind, pinaninindigan niya yon. he acts, he behaves according to what he sees in his mind about himself, that is how uh, self-concept uh, affects or influences the behavior not only of learners but also of teachers and of everybody in general. Hindi lang po ito applicable sa mga learners, hindi lang siya applicable sa mga teachers, but to everybody from from uh, the youngest to the oldest from People from all walks of life, lahat ay apektado ng tingin natin sa ating mga sarili. As mentioned earlier, our self-concept influences or affects our behavior. And that behavior in turn will determine uh, our the, the, the effort we will we will exert towards an endeavor or a task. It will also affect, it will determine the level of motivation that we will have to do something. So, yun, that is how uh, we correlate um, self-concept with uh, academic performance. So, at this point, we can already see the importance of self-concept in education. So the more important uh, question to uh, answer here is how to develop a student's positive concept, positive self-concept. We already know that having a positive self-concept is a good thing. We already know that a positive self-concept can lead to good academic performance. So what do we do now to develop a student's or to develop positive self-concept among our students? How do we foster, how do we promote 
Ah, a positive self-concept among our learners. Okay. So as you can see here, developing a positive self-concept is crucial. Meaning it's really, really very important, crucial for optimal academic performance. In fact, it's crucial as they grow and mature, even after they leave school, meaning after they graduate, they still need to have positive self-concepts. Diba sabi natin kanina, a positive self-concept is a good thing to have in all areas, in all stages of our life. So how do we do that? No? How do we develop a student's positive self-concept? First, a sense of family belonging is crucial and basic. The student should be able to find compassion, um, interest, affection, consideration, and well-being within their family. Being the first uh, social institution that help shape a child's personality, the family is one of uh, the institutions that leave a very deep mark on, uh, on, on a child, on, on a person. We learn our first uh, language, usually at home, our first actions, our first uh, manifestations of behavior. So whatever we get from our family leaves a profound effect on us as we grow up. <clears throat> whatever we, whatever treatment we get from our family leaves a deep mark on our personality. So as uh, young individuals, in order to uh, have a positive self-concept, the learner should feel or find compassion first at home. Compassion. They should feel loved. They should feel wanted. They should feel that they are safe there. In other words, the family should be an environment in which the child can develop a positive self-concept and things will start there. Because the, the, the self-concept that we get at home is the one that we will bring with us outside. So if a child grows up in a home where he is constantly insulted, where he is in, uh, constantly hurt, physically and emotionally. So he develops a very negative self-concept. That negative self-concept is what he brings with him when he goes to school. Negative ang self-concept sa bahay. Alam, ang pagdating sa school ay napakataas na ng, sarili, ng tingin niya sa sarili niya. Naturally, he will have uh, a negative self-concept. At least in the very beginning, no? Maaring mabago yon by the school, but it's very difficult to to change what is established at home. So, as much as possible, the learner should have this feeling of being, should feel that he is uh, accepted, he is uh, approved of, he is loved. 
that uh, his family is concerned with him, that his family support him in everything he does, things like those. He is appreciated, you know. That's very crucial, meaning very, very important. Kasi nga yung galing sa pamilya, malalim ang epekto niyan sa ating personality. Ano naman ang papel dyan ng teacher ay sa bahay yan. Well, there are times when our children, our, our learners, will uh, come to school with uh, family problems in their minds. Yung ibang bata hindi makapag-concentrate sa activities kasi iniisip yung um, nag-away sa kanilang bahay. Si nanay at si tata, yung pinagbunto na ng galit, siya. Siyang nasaktan, siyang nabugbog. Hindi naman siya may kasalanan. It, it was the father and the mother who were quarreling. So ano magagawa ng teacher in situations like that? Well, for one thing, he can talk, talk, talk to the parents. Kung mag kayo, manong-manong kayo lang. Huwag niyong idamay yung mga bata. The teacher can also talk to the child. Magbigyan ng advice, kung ano na dyan. I-comfort. Yan. Let him feel that uh, even if he is not wanted or loved in his own family, outside, there are people who can provide him with warmth, with affection, with love, even with protection. Kasi pwedeng reklamo ng teacher yung mga parents pag palaging sinasaktan yung bata. So you see? Another one, remember we're talking about fostering or developing a positive self-concept among our learners. No? So that when we become teachers, we can uh, apply this in our classrooms. We can turn our classrooms into places or learning environments where children will not only learn facts, where they will learn not only knowledge, not only will they learn skills and values, but they will also develop a very good, a very positive self-concept. They will develop a very high view a very good view or opinion of themselves. They, they would think of themselves as good, as very able individuals. So, yeah. So, number two. It's also important for that child to feel unique. No? Pag sinabi natin unique, uh, special, uh, distinct, yeah. meaning he... he he should feel that he's not treated just like anybody else. He's, he's special. Mayroong mga bata na particular sa ganyan eh. No? They should feel like someone special and one of a kind. Imagine that. And understand what exactly sets them apart from other people. At the same time, they should stay humble and focused on improvement. So, uh, one way by which we can do this is by highlighting their, their talents, by um, um, calling attention to their, their good performance, to their good behavior. If they do something good, uh, it should be acknowledged, things like those. But at the same time, my own reminder dito, we should always do it in such a way that they do not become arrogant. <laughs> baka, baka masubra ng kapupuri ay naging arrogant. They should stay humble and focused on improvement. While we should give praise, while we should uh, give positive reinforcement, we should always remind them that uh, they should stay humble and they should uh, always focus on improving themselves further as persons, as individuals. So that's the second one. The first one is uh, a supportive family background where they could find compassion, interest, affection, consideration, and well-being within their family. 
in addition to that the child should also feel unique no we should be watchful we should be very careful of our behavior as teachers no as much as possible we should use positive reinforcement or reinforcement or enforcers uh, remember it's already it's it's prohibited by law to uh, inflict a corporal punishment on our children on our pupils no and uh, nowadays when we speak of corporal punishment this does not only refer to hitting them uh, physically hindi lang yung pinalo mo binato mo ng blackboard binato mo ng eraser hindi lang yun ang considered the uh, corporal punishment nowadays harsh language can also be considered a corporal punishment minora mo yung mga yung minora mo yung bata in front of the class humiliating him and embarrassing uh, him in front of everybody pwede kang idemanda pwede kang kasuhan ng parents ng bata so you see so may kaso ka na hindi ka pa nakatulong to develop the child's positive self-concept yeah at the same time we should stay humble and focused on improvement there's the third one the student should feel capable of achieving uh, their goals they'll have to learn about the factors that come into play during that process which will help them in the future to do that they'll have to have they need to have good self-control because it will allow them to react to adversity in a better way the students should be made to feel that they are capable of achieving their goals so the environment that should be provided to them should be one no? that is supportive of their goals so that they would have that uh, confidence in themselves that they can achieve their goals a child who has been badgered with insults from the very beginning can hardly have this feeling of being capable magkumpisa sa elementary ay palagi na lang napagsasabihang bobo nung una kasi eh hindi yan bawal sa mga teachers eh during our time nako mga teachers kung makapangupak parang mga kwan parang mga kahoy ang pinapalo parang hindi kami <laughs> kung maka kung maka mura lalot nagagalit si ma'am or si sir whatever words or expressions come to their mind come out of their mouth so pagpalagay natin yung isang bata ay lumaki sa ganon sa school he will grow up thinking of himself as very incapable na mahina siya hindi ito kaya hindi ko ito kaya sabi ni ma'am mahina ko eh sabi ni sir bobo ko eh tapos sinabi pa nung barkada ko bobo din ko eh pre lowest na naman ako sa mat ganun din sa English lowest bobo talaga siguro ako pre oo nga brad bobo ka talaga imagine that sa lab na supportahan bobo ko nga talaga kung nga pre, kita ko rin eh, palagang lowest eh, ano kayang maganda kong gawin pre? Sa lang, sa lang dapat mong gawin. Ano yan pre? Big T. <laughs> Pakamatay ka. Maginda. Sino pa ang gaganahang mag-aaral eh? The student, the learner should feel that he is capable. Kaya yung mga teachers, mga friends, mga parents, mga siblings, yung buong environment niya, ang, ang common expression ay, kaya mo yan. 
magagawa mo yan. Si ang tantin si noon, talagang makakaya ng bata because he will count on those people for support. He will tend to uh, exert more effort because he wouldn't want to let them down. He wouldn't want to disappoint them. And the learner wouldn't want to disappoint himself. Yeah. So students, learners should be made to feel capable of achieving their goals. Kaya mo yan. May papasa mo yan. Mataas ang makukuha mong grade. Magiging honor student ka. Ganun ba? So, there is uh, a general atmosphere of support. And then number four, children need a safe, stable, and coherent framework of behavior in their lives. This is where positive role models are important because they encourage and foster things that help with achievement. Having role models around also helps when a child displays undesired behavior. Ano yung mga role models? Yung mga rumarampa? <laughs> Mga models ng toothpaste tsaka sabon. Hindi. Role models are people who provide us with standards of behavior. Kumbaga, these are the people who show us examples of, of the kind of behavior that is... Uh, or that will be expected from us. The kind of behavior that, that will be acceptable at home, in school, in the community, in, in the society as a whole. Role models. Children, learners, no? need a safe, stable, and coherent framework of behavior in their lives coherent framework of behavior meaning the behavior that um, they see is the kind of behavior that they will absorb or internalize what they see outside what they see around them they absorb and internalize and so therefore those internalized behavior will manifest, will demonstrate, or will show themselves in the child's own behavior. And so, therefore, positive role models should be made available, meaning the child should be exposed to role models that will provide him with positive examples of desirable behavior. Kasi kung ano yung nagkikita at na-experience ng bata, ma-internalize niya yun eh. I'll give you an example. Let us consider, let us talk about a child who grows up in a home where, uh, say, vulgar language is common among the parents, among the siblings. Si tatay, bang ayaw magpangyawa? Ganon din si nanay, ganon din si ate, ganon din si kuya. Yun araw-araw halos ang naririnig ni Bonso. Ano ang mangyayari sa lingwahe ni Bonso? Ay di yawan onra. See? What the child sees, what the child observes, he absorbs, he internalizes, and ultimately becomes his own behavior. Let us compare that with a child who grows up in a family where, uh, where vulgar language is not used at home. All the members, the parents, the siblings talk to each other, treat each other with love, 
with respect, with dignity. That is what he says. So naturally, that is what he will absorb and internalize. Naturally, again, his own behavior will be based on that. That is the kind of behavior that he will develop inside the home. And that is the kind of behavior that he will bring with him when he goes to school. That's the kind of behavior that he will bring with him when he goes to church. That's the kind of behavior that he will bring with him when he goes to the market, to the community. That's the kind of behavior that he will bring with him when he goes to other places. So you see? So positive role models, yung mga nagbibigay na examples. So in the case of Bunso, ang kanyang role model si tatay. Magalang si tatay, maayos magsalita, hindi magagalitin. Ganon din si nanay. Role model din si nanay. Kasi nagkikita siya ni Toto, ni Bunso. Ganon din si kuya. Magalang din magsalita at magbehave. Ganon din si ate. Uh, ano ang mag matututo ang ugali ni Bunso? Uh, naturally, the, the kind of ugali, the kind of attitude, behavior, the kind of language that he sees and hears and experiences around him. And these things should be Um, coherent uh, ang ibig sabihin ba consistent yung, yung nakikita niya halimbawa si kuya umuwi ng late uh, kuya comes home very late mga 1 o'clock in the morning okay lang kay tatay wala namang ginawa hindi, hindi nga tinanong kung saan ang galing hindi naman nagpaalam kung saan pumunta. Okay lang kay tatay. Okay lang din kay nanay. Nakita yun ni Bunso. Isipin niya, he would think that coming home late is okay in their house. Kasi hindi pinagalitan si kuya. After several days, si ate naman ang umuwi. Alauna din, hindi din nagpaalam. Aba, pinakabisa ang tatay. Pagkatapos ni tatay, sumunor si nanay, pinagkabisar ang ra. Malilito yung bata. He will be confused kasi hindi consistent. In his mind, and he will resolve, he, he will try to resolve that, that conflicting experience. Bakit nung si kuya ang umuwi ng alauna, okay kay tatay at kay nanay? Ni hindi pinagalitan. Si ate, bang kamuran rabo na si ate. So paglaki ko, anong gagawin ko? O oh, iba ko ng alauna dahil kay kuya ay okay? O oh, hindi, dahil hindi okay kay ate. What will I do? See? So yung patterns of behavior around him should be coherent. Should be uh, consistent. Ganon din sa school. Si student A na huling ng opya. Okay lang kay mom. Si student B na huling ng opya. Pinagalitan, pinahiya in front of the entire class. So, hindi siya consistent. Ano ngayon ang magiging oh, idea ng mga bata? Ah, a lot of things. Siguro, paborito ni Ma'am si Kwan, student A. Kasi magkamag-anak yan eh. Kasi, or, kasi pag umuwi yung tatay ni student A galing abroad, binibigyan si Ma'am ng tubero. <laughs> Kaya yan, hindi niya pinagalitan. O, oh, yun. Pagkamalan ka pang mapagbintangan ka pa ngayon na mayroong favoritism. So, yan po ang sinasabi dyan. Coherent framework of behavior. And positive role models. That's number four. Which is also the last. Okay, may sinabi. Ha? Isa ko pa uling Lolo. Si Lolo Anthony J. D'Angelo. He wrote... Develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. Yagandar, yan. Develop a passion for learning. If you do, meaning if you develop a passion for learning, you will never cease to grow. Now, is the word passion uh, familiar to everybody? So, yung hindi pa familiar sa word na passion. Passion means um, 
uh, a very, very strong desire, a very, very uh, strong interest towards uh, something. Yeah. So if you have a passion for music, you are very, very fond of music. You love music intensely. You always sing, you always play an instrument, you sing when you, when you take a bath, when you take a shower, you sing when you walk, when you sing when you drive your, your car, if you have one, you sing when you drive your motorcycle, you sing when you sleep. <laughs> jukes lang, jukes lang. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng passion. Strong desire, strong mm, interest towards something. So if we develop a strong desire for learning, if we develop a passion for learning among our students, our, uh, our pupils, our learners, they will never cease. They will never stop growing. They will never stop growing intellectually. Even us, we should develop a passion for learning. Tayo, pag naging teachers kayo, bakit titigil na kayo sa pag-aaral? Sabi nga, always, ano, once a teacher, always a student. Kami, kaming nasa teaching na, we still continue to study things. Uh, we we uh, still uh, learn. Learning is a uh, lifetime process. Eh? It never stops. Oh. It never stops. It's a continuous process. It will only stop if we are already horizontal. <laughs> if we are already horizontal. <laughs> so yun, ang sabi ni Anthony J.D. Angelo. So how do we develop that passion for learning? Well, one way is to develop a positive self-concept uh, among our learners because that will develop in them uh, a desire for learning, passion for learning in turn. No? Kasama na yon. Okay. Um, all right. Um, this is the end of the video only, not the topic. The uh, video is already uh, more than an hour. As a matter of fact, it's already an hour and 18 minutes, no? An hour and 18 minutes. Baka mahirapan ako mag-upload nito sa YouTube kapag sobrang haba. <clears throat> so I will uh, cut it here uh, and prepare another lecture video for the continuation of our topic. Remember, dalawang ating pinag-usapan dito. Self-concept and self-efficacy. We will end our discussion regarding self-concept at this point. But as already mentioned, I will still have, we will still have another video for self-efficacy. I will upload another video, another lecture video uh, for self-efficacy also as an additional information or supplementary material to our module pertaining to self-concept and self-efficacy. So, hanggang dito lang muna. Uh, just wait for the uh, continuation of this video.